is extraordinary how um, limited we have been in the past. Uh, after all, it's only 150 years ago that we were pouring raw sewage into the oceans. Uh, why? Because we thought, well, the oceans are infinitely large, uh, so that uh, well, the towns of effluents can just disperse and disappear. Well, now, actually, that's almost true as far as natural sewage is concerned. But it is not true as far as plastic is concerned. Plastic does not degrade. Plastic does not disappear. The processes of nature which deal with effluent uh, do not deal with plastic. In the last 60 to 70 years, we have produced an estimated 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic. That's a huge number to try and visualise. It would be around the size of 25 million jumbo jets. An estimated 6.3 billion tonnes of that plastic has become waste. And of that waste, only 9% has been recycled. What happened to the rest of it? Most of it has been dumped in landfill or has found its way into our natural environments. This plastic waste has made its way into our ocean via a number of different routes. For example, through our rivers and drain systems, via landfills or simply being picked up by the wind and blown. Our ocean is now heavily polluted with plastic the visible, floating waste doesn't show the true scale of the problem. Because eventually, 90% of plastic sinks. A third of all plastic ends up in the natural environment as pollution, amounting to 100 million tonnes every year. This is around the combined weight of 700 billion plastic bottles. Our throwaway attitude towards plastic has created an environmental crisis with far-reaching consequences. Plastic pollution has now reached every corner of the planet's oceans, from Antarctica to the depths of the Mariana Trench. Larger pieces of plastic in the ocean can get caught on birds and animals, injuring them. They can carry these pieces of plastic for long periods. Once entangled, it's almost impossible for them to escape. The injuries are painful and often fatal. Marine birds and animals often swallow larger plastic items mistaking them for food. Because plastic isn't biodegradable, wildlife can't digest it. It may remain trapped in their digestive systems until they die. Ingested pieces of plastic can often damage or block an animal's digestive system. Unable to eat, they slowly starve to death. A baby brooder's whale died having swallowed six square metres of plastic sheeting. And all seven of marine turtle species are known to ingest plastic. Plastic waste is killing our marine life. The sun's UV rays and the salt in seawater make plastic brittle. Buffeted by the ocean waves, the plastic pieces start to break up, creating sharp fragments. The pitted edges of these fragments catch particles of chemical pollutants that have entered the ocean as a result of decades of agricultural and industrial runoff. The particles hitchhike on the plastic fragments, creating small, toxic pills. These plastic pills are ingested by marine animals and birds, causing them further harm as toxins are released into their bodies.
Microplastics are small pieces of plastic under five millimeters in diameter. These originate from two main sources. Primary microplastics include microfibers from clothes and rubber dust from tires. The majority of modern clothing fabrics are made from plastic. Every time we wash these synthetic materials, millions of tiny plastic fibers enter the water system from our washing machines. They're too small to be caught by the filters used at water processing plants and find their way into the ocean. Friction between tires and road surfaces cause small particles to break away. And when it rains, those microplastics are washed off the roads into waterways and drains, again beginning a journey to the ocean. Secondary microplastics result from plastic waste items breaking up again and again until they become microplastics. Scientists are discovering that many sea creatures worldwide are ingesting microplastics. This invisible menace has infiltrated the ocean food web at multiple levels, from tiny zooplankton to the fish and shellfish that we eat. Only now are we beginning to realize the threat that microplastics pose to the health of the ocean and our world. There is clear evidence that plastic pollution is everywhere in our ocean now. Some of it is transported by the ocean's five gyres, which are huge central points created by rotating ocean currents. Many people talk about garbage patches that have been created in the centre of the gyres. These garbage patches are not actually islands made of plastic waste, but water tests have shown a higher concentration of plastic and microplastic at the centre of each gyre. Different plastics have different densities, so they float at different depths. This means the pollution is more of a cloudy plastic soup running through the water column, rather than a floating garbage patch at the surface. But all plastics eventually lose their buoyancy, which is why an estimated 90% eventually sink to the ocean floor and mix with the sediment there. Plastic pollution and its effects are now impossible to ignore. We see it entangling and being swallowed by marine animals and birds. We have evidence of it entering the food chain. We have evidence of it creating a plastic soup at all levels in the ocean. And we see it washed up on our beaches. We must become more aware of the dangers posed by plastic pollution and stop it entering our ocean. The whole planet is dependent on a healthy ocean. We have to act. We have to act now to try and clear up and repair some of the appalling damage that we've made to the ocean. Um, and that is going to retire, require positive action but there is also much simpler things we can do to prevent it getting much worse. Uh, and that is to make a demand on people who provide or put the plastic into our lives. A, to make that plastic much easier to recycle. And B, not to use it gratuitously. Not to encourage us to put in a, a elaborate packaging to titillate us. And then, on the, having done that, to chuck it into the that's the important thing, because it adds cost to the object, uh, it adds cost to the, to the you that you have to pay, but you have to pay a much, much bigger price, and our children will have to pay a much bigger price, unless we change our behaviour now.